beautiful beaters, it's Gina from OrchidandOpal.com and I'm back today with another very quick and simple men's bracelet. Of course, this doesn't have to be a men's bracelet. Anybody could wear this bracelet, but it does have a more masculine feel and I think it would make a great quick and easy gift for a man in your life. It really only takes two main products besides the glue and some other essentials. Ideally, you want some five millimeter bolo cord and then these anchor clasps or cord ends. I used four millimeter bolo in this and I didn't like it as well. These cord ends are really more fit for the five millimeter, but I just got this in. You can find these two products in particular at amazon.com right now. I will leave the links to those down below. Also, if you're looking for some other ideas, I will link the video in the corner. A few months ago, I did share 12 men's bracelet ideas that mainly involved different forms of leather cord and metallic components, so you can check that out. If you haven't already, I'm finally getting around to sprinkling in some of these simple tutorials. So besides those two items, you will need some E6000 or some type of jewelry adhesive, a craft stick or pencil, something with an end that will assist you with your glue that you don't mind getting glue on, some scrap paper or cardboard, and of course, a measuring tape or ruler and some scissors. Let me clear off my space and we will jump on into it. The first thing you need to do is determine the size bracelet that you want to make. So I am flashing this chart on the screen. I found some generic information online as far as men's wrist sizes. So determine what size bracelet you want to make, how large you want it to be all said and done, then double that number. And if you wanna get technical, you can subtract one inch for the clasp area and that should give you approximately what you need. So for example, I want the bracelet today that I'm making to be eight and a half inches around, including the anchor. So I'm gonna double that, make that 17 inches of cord and then minus one, which makes it 16 inches that I need to cut today in order to get the desired length. So figure that out and then cut your cord accordingly. So you end up with something like this that you are then going to double up. You're gonna make one end into a loop. This is so simple, guys. All you have to do is take this piece that comes in the set and feed both of those ends through this component, which is gonna hold this cord together and make that into the loop that's gonna go around the anchor. Then just make sure the ends of your cord are meeting and give this one more test to make sure this is going to be the right length or if you need to trim any off before you glue. So your two cord ends are gonna pop right in there perfectly. That five millimeter really is the best size for these clasps. And then this component is going to be able to slide and move around as much as it wants and that is fine. So giving this a loose measure, I have my measuring tape at about eight and a half inches, which is what I want the final product to be. And that is just about right, which means we are ready to glue in our cord. And a couple of little tips for you at this point, you might want to start to train your cord to curl a little bit. If it wants to straighten up on you, you can definitely work with it a little bit and start to train it in the way that you want it to sit because it is going to be especially stiff when it comes out of the package. Another thing that helps when you're about to glue is you can move this component closer to the ends of your cord to keep the cords together and in place. Or if you have one of these handy clips or a binder clip, something similar, you can pinch the ends together just like so, so you could make sure that they are staying in one place and they can dry without any additional movement. So I'm going to place a dollop of my E6000 onto this scrap paper, and you want to generously coat the inside of this cord end without going overboard, no pun intended, because when you push in the ends of your cord, you don't want a bunch of glue coming back out and coating the metal or your cord. So there is a happy medium and it's best to start with a smaller amount and build up rather than to get a big old glob of glue inside that is way, way too much. So just take your craft stick, whatever you're using and coat the inside making sure you clean up the edges of your cord end as best as you can before putting in these two ends. And then you can just 
pop those down in there, push them as far as they will go into the clasp. I'm gonna take this clip off for just a moment. Then try to wipe off any excess glue if any of it popped out on you. I have a tiny bit right there that I will clean up with the clean end of my craft stick before it dries. And then what you wanna do is set this in an undisturbed location for about 24 hours so you really give that glue enough time to set. All right, so that's really all there is to it. You just wanna make sure you gave this plenty of time to dry and then this loop will just slip right around the edge of that anchor and will hold in place like that. And you can also keep training your cord to curve a little bit more once it has had ample time to dry. So that is it for this tutorial. I hope it was helpful for you and another quick and easy project idea for a masculine style bracelet using some cord and metal findings. You can find these cords in all different colors and these anchors come in different metal finishes as well. I think a black and silver combination would look really classy. And I actually prefer these anchors to the ones that I had picked up on BB Craft because these come with these specific findings to keep your cord in a loop. And I find that this cord end is shaped much better to accommodate the bolo cord. So that is why I went with this type of anchor from Amazon instead of the ones that I picked up from BB Craft. And like I said before, I will leave the links to the products I used today down below the video. Feel free to leave me a comment or question down below. You know I always love to hear from you. I hope you'll stay tuned for much more. I share a wide variety of jewelry making here, not only quick and very simple projects like this, but also more advanced bead weaving and all sorts of fun things. Until next time, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. And as always, happy beading. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up. For more content like this, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell to be notified of my latest videos. You can check out the information section below this video for links to all my social media handles, recommended products, and my shop and blog at orchidnopal.com. Thanks for watching.